Hey, thanks for being a part of the conversation. Let's do some pod crashing. Episode number 290 is with Nancy Glass from the podcast Burden of Guilt. Hello, hello. Hey, good morning, Aaron. Look at you, buddy. I don't usually get to see you. I know. Nancy insisted she wanted to look at... Uh... How can I do a Zoom without seeing a person? <laughs> Love that photo of you. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's uh, That was uh, taken for a radio station publicity shot, and he said, be you. And I said, well, I, I believe in Native American spirituality. I live by the rule and the path, and so uh, that's what it's oh. going to include. <laughs> It almost looks like a um, a microphone. Uh, uh, what do you call those things? Uh, the, the not a pop filter, but those things that they put on the microphones, the fuzzy things to cut yeah, down yeah. on the. Uh, is that, that what that is? No, actually, it's acoustic. And what acoustic is is that it's it's the what Native Americans did was that they would go into different nations and they would go up and and even though they may have been enemies, they would touch the leader with the acoustic as a way of saying tag, you're it. And it, it showed confidence oh, and wow. courage is what it did. And and so that, that kind of stuff was, was so so important to them because even though they may have been enemies, they still had this this courage about them that represented the people. Well, it's perfect placement there because it looks like a big boom microphone. In front of you, so. <laughs> I think it's, I love that that's your spirituality. That is Thank so you. impressive. Thank you. Thank you. You should see this studio. It's full of all Native American spiritual tools. I mean, it's like, it, you know, when you walk in here, it's like my, my dog comes in here even when, when I'm not in here because I think she feels something inside the studio. Wait, so are you going to turn on your camera so I can see? <laughs> you don't want to see me. <laughs> I'm a radio guy, man. <laughs> That's what I always say. Who the heck wants to see me? I understand. Like my wife just yelled, I've got the face for radio. Thanks, babe. Oh, nice. Thank, you. <laughs> Thank you. Well, so do I, but I still I still want to see people. I. I don't know. You know, you know what it is, is here's how it goes, Nancy, is the fact that because I am a radio person and, and radio people really go up into their head and into their heart, that when you're looking yes. at a screen, I'm watching you. And so when I, when I first got into Zoom, what happened was, is that I would look away and the person I was talking with would stop talking. I went, God, you, I got to quit looking away. But because I take so many notes and I, and I have so many things around me that are, that's leading to the next question, the moment I take my eyes off you, it, it interrupts what you're what you're sharing that's fascinating i always think that radio people are the smartest people because in tv you can see me right mm -hmm. yes. okay and tv you can do this yep <laughs> but in radio you need to be completely engaged your brain you have to have an answer you have to listen rather than wait well, that, that's the very reason why I, I believe in the mantra, ask the questions and then question the answers, because that to me is going it, to, it, it really gets us closer and closer to the story. For instance, like with burden of guilt, there's so many questions I have here because I, how can this happen? And, and, and more wait, wait, importantly, so, wait, are we, so are we starting? Oh, we're always starting. We're always on. That's what I love about, about streaming. It's like, it's on. <laughs> okay. All right. That's so funny you say that because Mark Marin, uh, who hosts a big, big podcast, he came into my studio one yeah. day. We were 20 minutes into the conversation. He says, When are we going to get started? Mark, you've been on. The very second you walk <laughs> in here, you've been on. <laughs> well, that's fantastic. <laughs> so, how I, I don't, the, the story is horrifying. And, and yet, yeah. somehow, you've been pulled into this because here's what, here's what I put in after listening to the episodes. I said that, that it's, it's a very deep, dark story, but you've been called to simplify it so that the rest of us can catch up. Well, here's the thing. It's a story that I've known about wow. since the 90s, and it's a story that I spent 10 years um, getting the subject to talk, ready to talk about. She has never spoken about it um, since the 90s. It is a very painful, terrible situation for her. Here's the story. She was two years old. Yeah. And when she was two years old, her four month old baby brother died. And even as a child, she always asked, what happened to my baby brother? What happened to baby Matthew? And she was told every kind of story. His um, head got caught between the mm. bars. He died sudden inf infant death syndrome. There was an accident. And then finally they said, don't ask. And she was punished and punished and punished for asking the questions. But when she's 14 years old, she gets herself to a police station and she asks for 
the police report. And the police report says, mother says, two-year-old <sighs> killed baby brother, no. threw him out of crib and killed her brother. Oh. And she's what, thinking, I killed my brother? Mm. How could I, how, how is that even possible that I could have killed my baby brother? So she calls her grandmother and she says, did I kill my baby brother? And her grandmother says, yes, honey, <gasps> we all do this. This is why we didn't want to talk about it. We didn't want you to feel that pain. And yes, you killed your baby brother. Mm. So she, again, can't believe it in her heart. It doesn't seem right to her. Her parents are horribly abusive. And she, when she gets out of high school, she joins the army. She wants to be a very strong person because she's grown up with abuse. She's grown up with confusion. And she feels like the discipline of the army will be great for her. When she's in the army, she gets married and she has children. And one day her two-year-old goes to pick up a gallon of milk and cannot do it. Mm. And that's when it hits her. A gallon of milk weighs eight pounds. Yep. So if a gallon of milk weighs eight pounds and a two-year-old can't pick it up, how did she at the age of two pick up a wiggly 15-pound baby? Mm. And she realizes she didn't kill her brother. And now she wants to find out who did. Mm. Mm. And she does. It's, she's an amazing human being. Doesn't it shock you that this sounds like something that somebody pinned out on a computer screen and that, but yet it's reality. And for someone to be able to go through this and to be able to pick up the, well, I always call it breadcrumbs. If, if you really pay attention to the things around you, you'll find answers, but you've got to locate the breadcrumbs. Yes. And it's very hard to even understand what a breadcrumb is yeah. when somebody has been emotionally and physically abusing you since almost birth. So how does she figure it all out? But she's so strong, she does, and she wants she wants justice for her baby brother. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not about her, for her, and that's the kind of person she is. This is why I admire her so much. It was really about her baby brother. She didn't want him forgotten. Mm. She felt this connection to him. Mm. And, you know, and, and so, you know, of course, the people will come along the lines and say, oh, well, you'll meet your brother one day. You'll meet your brother one day. No, meet me. And, and I have to argue with that because inside this studio are the ashes of, of my mother and my brother and, and all of my rescued dogs. And so it's not like I'm, I'm not going to wait to meet them somewhere else someday. I want to meet them now. And I feel like that that's what this is why I'm so connected to this story is because she does want to 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 help answer the calling that her brother might be sending toward her. I believe in that spiritual yes. journey. And there are things that happen when they go to uh, exhume his body 20 something years mm. later, they assume that there's nothing that's going to be there. I mean, it should just be dust. Right. And when they open the casket, there is a perfectly intact baby boy wearing a baseball cap and holding a teddy bear. See, see. And that is when she believes he was waiting for her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He was waiting. And that autopsy helped them figure out exactly what happened and who did it. This had to have changed you. I mean, seriously, when you when you get involved in a story like this and you hear things like this, this this gets inside your own walk and way. Well, yeah, I mean, absolutely. I mean, Errol, when when you're a news reporter, you're sort of a video vampire. I mean, you go and suck up a story and you leave the subjects you know, drained. I felt such a responsibility towards her and and so much respect for her. And yes, it does move me completely. And I, you know, I'm a softie. I once said to um, a very well-known reporter um, from 60 Minutes, I had covered a story that really affected me about a, a girl who was murdered. And I went home and I cried. And he and I said to him, "How do you not?" be affected by your stories. And he said, I never am. That's why I'm a good journalist. Mm. And I thought I always am. That's mm -hmm. why I'm a good journalist. Mm -hmm. You have to be a human being. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm with you 100% on that because the, and that's why I have to ask you with you being a journalist, that's your life. But what is your nightmare? Because I mean, because when you get into a story like this and you realize that the only power you've got is to help share the story, but not change the life. I mean, it's like, oh my God, you're holding on right. to such a major part of this journey. 
Right. That a very good observation. Yes, I felt a responsibility. And uh, she has, we've been together the whole way. We have such a deep friendship and relationship that I was very, very careful because I don't want to do any damage. I don't want to do any harm. So how do you keep it on a level of a relationship in the way of, okay, today we're not going to talk about what you've been through. Today I want to talk about what you're doing in your right now. Yeah. Because how do you do that? When you like and respect somebody, you do. And I don't, you know, I don't want her to feel that because I don't just care about her story. I care about her. Mm-hmm. We have a lot in common and we talk about how we both love poodles. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we have a lot in common. And, uh, you know, I, I think it's really important for people who share their very deep stories to know that you care about them. Yeah. My wife's mother was murdered. So therefore, when she has oh. those moments where, where she has a flashback, basically, it's like, I mean, do, do you find yourself putting yourself in that position of, I've, it, okay, now I have to be a listener. Let me show some compassion, but I'm going to help you out of this hole. I can't help somebody out of a wow. hole, really. I'm not qualified, but I can listen. Yeah. And I can tell their story well. What do you do for your wife? What do you do? I, I definitely listen. And and I think one of the things that really helped her was I said, we got to go to Chicago. And she says, why? I said, I need to sit in that closet where they found your mother because I believe your mother wants me to write. And so, and I went, I went there to write. And and so there are many times my wife will just hold on to that journal just because she knew that I wrote in that, in that closet where her mother was. That's really something. That takes a lot. That's but, really but something. But that's else. us as journalists as well. And I think it's higher yeah. than that. I think it's us as communicators because we do things as as writers and as journalists that that that's that people just don't understand. Right. And people judge that yes. too. That's the other thing. That's you know the newer thing that everybody's somebody commented on the um on the podcast, on the burden of guilt podcast, on the reviews. Tracy Raquel tells the story of how she's put on the balcony when she's two years old and her mother jumps off the balcony. Mm. Second floor, she doesn't die. She breaks every bone in her body and she's very busy ordering her now two plus year old around and makes her cook eggs for her. She stands on a stepladder and she has to cook eggs while her mother's screaming at her. And somebody wrote, I don't believe that happened. I don't believe it. Mm, 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 so I don't believe mm, in this podcast, but it did happen. Mm, it did. Uh- yeah, you know, and, and the thing about it is, is that, that I, I've seen something like that because my first wife was was very abused by her father. And I think the reason why we illegally got married when she was 16 and I was 17 was because I was trying to free her from the house. So how do you do you feel like that maybe you're helping somebody get free of their of, of their nightmare? That's what you try to do. Yeah, that you try to do, but in a very respectful way. As I said, I'm not qualified and Tracy Raquel has been working on herself for so long, but the damage that was done is very deep. It's very hard. Mm-hmm. So did she write a journal? Did she keep something like this? Because I'm a daily writer and I believe that so many things can be placed on a page for a future reader or somebody somebody down the road that's going to help find peace. Arrow, I think that that's true, but she has not. Oh, my God. I think this is her way, though. She sends me notes. Good. She tells me little by little things that she's never spoken about before. And I think that's her way of doing it. Plus, I have to say, she can't really write because her hands are... Yep. Um, uh, how do I explain? She has a... Uh, a tendon thing Mm -hmm. where she can't really open her hands Mm -hmm. so she can't really write okay then let me ask you this then then with with you being in this position that you are with everything that you've done with journalism i mean this right here seems to be you have worked toward this moment to help really bring peace to another person's heart i can't imagine what it's doing to your soul and how it's strengthening your your awareness of all people on the planet no, you know what happens? It scares you. Does it? You have a responsibility. Yep. It scares you because you think, oh my God, what if I say something that hurts her? 
or that is wrong. So we fact check everything over and over and over again. So it is not wrong. So it does not hurt. So you don't, I don't allow myself to feel good. I allow myself to feel cautious. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine if the world had not opened its eyes and heart to podcasting, how journalism would still be locked in on a four minute story? Because I mean, that's what I love about what you're doing here is that you're giving us not just a series, but you're giving us realism as told by somebody who is a storyteller. Arrow, when was the last time you saw a four minute story on the news? No. They're 90 seconds. <laughs> You're right. <off laughs> it. And they're guessing. It's like, you got to fill time. Guess, guess, guess. What's going on? <laughs> so okay, true. well, something exploded here. I think it's this. <laughs> Nobody knows anything. There's no such thing anymore mm. as storytelling. Or, I mean, I guess there's journalism, but it, it's a very different animal than when I started in the business. Yeah. I mean, I, I want to write a book that, that talks about what happened to journalism between, let's say, 2001 and the present time, because how, how journalists have gone from doing that story to writing right. books to doing podcasts, because, I mean, that, that is such an evolution that nobody is talking about, but yet it's happening, and we're getting a bigger and better story through these other elements. Well, I love doing a podcast. And when we started our podcast company, we did because we're a TV company. We, you know, didn't know what would happen. And I just thought, you know, it's I want to tell a story without a network telling me, you know, change this, change that. I want to do something that we're only responsible to ourselves. And that's how our company started. Mm -hmm. And um, that's why, like we do, uh, we did one called Betrayal the perfect husband and you know he wasn't <laughs> so, and and it became a documentary on hulu this and that led and while that was happening that's when i reached out to tracy raquel again because i'd been talking to her and talking to her and talking to her and i said to her you know i'd rather do a podcast we are doing a documentary which will air on paramount plus next year and that documentary is from her point of view she tells the story. Mm. This is us talking together and exploring the story and taking taking it apart and and dropping the breadcrumbs all the way along. But you, you know what's interesting, Nancy, is the fact that being a listener, and, and this is the first time that you and I have ever shared a conversation, you can take yeah. me... 30 miles down the road and it feels like 30 seconds when I get to that I mean it's Howard Stern always talked about that he says I want to create radio where you can't get out of the car Nancy that's exactly what you've yes. done you've, <laughs> you, you've created a podcast where I can't get out of the car oh thank you that is so kind of you that is so nice of you that's that's what I hope for because you know like you we work in a vacuum yep. I don't know What's going to happen? I only know it's like people always say, what does the audience want? And I think, how would I know? Right. I only know what I like. I can't imagine. I can't work for an imaginary person. Mm -hmm. You know, and networks will say to you, it's a woman and she's this old and she does this. I'm like, who is that person? <laughs> this doesn't exist. She's a soccer mom. Oh, come on. You know how I found the answer to that question? Because you're absolutely right. Because I was supposed to be talking to Brenda, who's 35, who's got 2.3 kids and drives a van. And finally, I, I lost my vision. So I got a job at a grocery store so I could see who my community was. And? I My God, I can't leave. I Because I love them so much. <laughs> I do. And I, and I love mine so much. I love my job. I feel so lucky that I get to look for great stories and I get a chance to tell them yep. and it isn't easy. And it's very scary because you want to, you hope that people understand it, appreciate it, get it the way you intend to. You hope that the person who shares the story, I mean, Tracy Raquel, here's somebody who was, her mother puts her in a mental institution. Uh, you know, she attempts suicide. I mean, there's a lot of drama in her emotional life. Mm. And you have to, again, be careful about that. And you really just hope that people are with you along the along the ride. They're, they're 
I'm going to ask you the question that I usually ask authors. When you have okay. to end the story, which, you know, I, it's like I can't picture an ending to this story, but when you have to end it, how are you going to nurture your own soul? Because that's it. You're going to mourn the loss of this podcast. That is absolutely right. That is absolutely correct. It's almost like a postpartum mm -hmm. when you finish you feel this sort of mourning. But I know that Tracy Raquel and I will have a relationship that lasts for the rest of our lives. Oh, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future, Nancy. The door is Thank always going to be open for you. Thank you. And I love that you rescue dogs. Oh. And I love that you care so much about so many things. It's really a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you, you so much. My little girl's with me even as we speak. I'm, I'm, I'm shocked that you didn't hear her groaning. Because she, when she groans, I swear to God, she's telling me, that was a stupid question, dude. Come on. Come on. You know better than that. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You be brilliant today, okay? Thank you. You too.